Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing beautifully well. So welcome to CAPS Problems with DCS World Modules, September 2019. Catchy title, I know. Um, this might be a one-off, it might be a series we do, to see if we get any use from it, or whether it's completely useless, whether it's just an old man, aka me, whinging. We'll see. Uh, the reason I made this video is because I got a lovely phone call today from, a, I better not use any names just in case, a chap from Mag3 or Magnitude. Uh, they made the CE2 in DCS World and the MiG-21 Biz. And I think they're making the F4U and the F uh, Crusader and the Corsair, I think, uh, which are both uh, look like cool planes. And it was a really cool phone call. He was a really nice guy, you know, just a genuinely nice guy. And it was a lovely phone call. We talked about all sorts of things. We talked about the Christian Eagle, the MiG-21. Uh, we talked about real piloting. We talked about the future of their modules. We talked about the future of DCS World uh, and the future of GR. Just everything, really. And lovely conversation. It kind of reminds, reminds me why I do this. And so I thought, well, um, let's try and make something good come out of it. So the main reason he'd called... Uh, was to thank us or thank me for the review that we did on the CE2, and but most importantly to address some problems that I have with it. In fact, sorry, I'm gonna have to backtrack a bit here to make this kind of make sense. I've got to I've got to tell you why uh, or how I see myself and GR our position in the DCS world. So, and this will help understand why I've made these complaints uh, that I've written down here. So I see DCS World, or I see Eagle Dynamics, you know, as, uh, uh, they're going to shout at me, uh, but uh, kind of a bunch of kind of hard case Russian nerds sitting there making the most accurate simulator that they can possibly build, okay? I think we'd more or less agree that's what they're doing there. On the other side is you lot, the guys watching this video, the users, and you have a whole spectrum, you know, people out there, you got ex-pilots, you got kids, you've got an, uh, old men who can barely use a computer, and you've got, you know, hardcore computer nerds, you've got, and everything in between. And my job, as it's come to be, and none of this is on purpose, I never meant to get into, I don't even know why I put my first video out, I just did, but for one way, reason or another, we got where we are. And so I see myself as uh, somewhere in between, somewhere between the kind of ultra hardcore kind of nerdiness, difficult to get access to, difficult to understand, ego dynamics, and the human user. So I'm like, if you like, the soft underbelly of Eagle Dynamics. Just to be clear, I have absolutely no affiliation with them at all and probably never will do. It'd be lovely if I did, but it's probably not going to happen. And therefore, it's my job to make DTS as usable and approachable for you, the users, the players, as much as possible. So make the modules as understandable as possible with tutorials, make it look as fun as possible to get as many people in as we can with cool videos and sounds and music and stuff like that and to help you guys out with various stuff and problems that you're having. So that's where I see as my, for whatever reason I do this, as my position. Okay, so with that being my position and what I'm, in my mind, I'm supposed to be doing, uh, I did a whole series of buyer's guides, a whole series of buyer's guides. I did a buyer's guide for all of these modules for the reasons I've just explained, trying to show you what you get for your $50, for your $20, for your $70, and if there's any obvious problems that would make you enjoy, uh, not enjoy them. And so I picked out about 25, maybe 30 problems over the various aircraft that were worth uh, mentioning. Problems with sound, problem with graphics, problems with playability, problems with bugs, and so on. The vast majority are not big enough for me to worry about mentioning in this video here. Most of them are developmental problems because most of the aircraft in TCS World are still early access. They're still being built, they're still getting the sound effects right, and so on. But three of the problems I did think is worth uh, discussing, pointing, bringing to light. And so as seeing these as problems that would reduce people's fun in the game and that's what i'm trying to do at the end of the day get people to have as much fun you know this isn't real at the end of the day we're not real pilots but get you to have as much fun as you can you know you go you work hard at your day jobs that you probably most of you don't want to do you get deserve to come home and have a bit of fun and if that fits in with my interest in military aviation then all the better for us so the first problem we'll look at is the ce2 which has kind of been addressed today i said it had a problem with its feel um and the problem now just to make very clear i'm not a real pilot i've never flown a real plane before i probably never will i've just got too many problems and so i don't know what a real plane flies like but it i found the ce2 a little immersion breaking a little just basic common sense it didn't feel right compared to the other 35 modules out there 
And the main problem I highlighted was because I have to quantify this, obviously. I have to I can't just say it feels wrong. I have to give some constructive advice. And the main thing I said was especially the role. And especially the role, the problem I had, it rolls fast, and that's fine, nothing wrong with that. But the main problem I was pointing out was that when it finishes its roll um, and you neutralize the stick, so you're no longer rolling the stick, the plane stops rolling immediately. There's no feel of, if you like, rotational inertia. If you did it in an F-15, a big 20-ton plane, and you uh, neutralize the stick, then it, the plane doesn't stop rolling immediately, or a Tomcat, or whatever. It continues rolling for a bit, and then slowly it stops. And that makes it, for me, feel like it passes the basic, obvious, kind of basic physics test. It feels what I would consider to be real. This doesn't. This stops, turn and stop, roll and stop. And therefore, I lost my immersion. And so speaking to the very nice man at Mag3 today, we were talking about that and he flies, uh, he either owns and or owns and flies the real life Christian Eagle 2. And he was saying about how that is exactly how the real aircraft is. He was saying if you took the engine out, the 200 horsepower engine out, then two people can pick the Christian Eagle up. And if we go here and look at the weight of it in Wikipedia, uh, so empty weight is 460 kilos, which is about a third of a normal size car. Or gross weight, I'm not actually sure what that is, but fully fueled and maybe with a uh, driver or pilot in, 700 kilos. It's still extremely low. And he said the reason the real aircraft is exactly like that, i.e. it stops its roll immediately, is simply because even with real life, actual real world physics, there's no real force trying to pull that aircraft round on the roll once the ailerons are neutralised. And so, unlike a big 20-ton F-15, it hasn't got that vast amount of force, tons of, of, of force, you know, trying to pull it around. I don't know the real physics because I'm not, you know, smart like that. But you know what I'm getting at. I'm just talking about the basic elemental understanding of it. And um, this chap was talking about how he had real F-15, F-18 pilots come up in his CE-2 so they could fly it as well. And they were amazed as well. It almost kind of broke their immersion in real life because they were saying how maneuverable it is especially in role compared to frontline fighters f-15s and, and hornets and whatnot and so from this very trustworthy source then we, we can say that um and as, as well i should say that other people who've flown the ce2 that he's spoken to and talked to and he helped develop the physics engine of the module are all perfectly satisfied that it is one-to-one -one accurate no it feels exactly how it should do and so we've had to shift the problem. If the physics model is actually completely correct, we've had to shift by where the problem is. And the problem is, in my head, really, um, this plane is so different from other aircraft that we fly, it breaks my immersion because my understanding of the aircraft simply isn't high enough. And so, essentially, that's the problem solved, really. There's nowhere else to go with it. That's how it is. That's how it flies in real life. I have that confirmed by real stunt pilots and real, you know, frontline fighter pilots. There's not much further we can go with that. So we're going to strike that one off Cap's list of problems. And I'm sure many other problems will pop up uh, that I have. But that one's as far as I want to take it. Um, and, in fact, just some anecdotal, some cool stuff. He was talking about why the pilot flies in the back. So if you've got two guys in it, you have the... It's, oh, I'm going to get this wrong now, aren't I? The instructor at the back... No, the student at the back and the instructor in the front. And that's because... Uh, and if there's one person flying it then he always goes in the back and the reason for that is because the plane is so light and small that the center of gravity shift of having just one human in there at the front would mean that it became unflyable you wouldn't even be able to take it off because shifting that 80 kilos forward put the center of gravity threshold longitudinally is only one foot in this aircraft and if you go outside of those uh, limits then the airplane simply can't fly uh, and I found that really interesting. Isn't that interesting? It's so light and so finely tuned that you have to sit in the back seat. Otherwise, you can't even take the bloody thing off. I had no idea uh, that was a thing, but uh, there you go. So we're putting that to bed. Uh, fantastic. And how great it is for developers to come and talk to me. Uh, the soft underbelly of ED, <laughs> as I now describe myself. Uh, so that takes us on to the next one, the Gazelle. Uh, honestly, it's the same problem. Uh, it's, I feel... I. Treat it as a bigger problem, because this, I only feel the, feel the problem in the roll and a little bit in the pitch axis. For me, in the gazelle, I found it in all axis, in the roll, in the yaw rotation, and the, you know, the z-axis, up and down, altitude, whatever you call it. And my reason for pointing this out is 
like we said at the beginning, I want people to enjoy this as much as possible and invest themselves into this as much as possible. So it's very likely that this problem here is going to be similar to this problem here in that it's a very high performance vehicle. Uh, and that this is where the problem is stemming from. However, this needs proper clarification. So, um, uh, on the plus side, Polychop, the chaps who uh, built this, uh, one of their chaps has contacted me and threatened to come and talk to me, which is great. That's exactly what we want. Communication solves everything. Um, I have been chasing him up over the last few weeks, and I haven't managed to get any contact. Um, so if you're out there, please let me know. Um, I'm trying to contact you on Facebook at the moment. I know he's been having some health issues, so I've, uh, I'm not going to push it, obviously, just in case, you know. It's uh, got to be reasonable. But I would love to uh, sit down and have a talk, if possible, and just go through the same thing. Can we allay fears um, of my fears of the gazelle and my fears of recommending it to people because my fear of the immersion of breaking of the axis uh, of the movement of the aircraft in all axes. Uh, so I'll leave that one there. I'd love to go through that. I'd love to get that one chalked off the board. Which takes me to my next of the third big problems. This one's very controversial, obviously. People love their Tomcat, and that is great. I think it's fantastic that they love their modules, and they love it for very good reason. It's excellent uh, in just about every way this aeroplane is. Um, it is just just very incredible piece of programming. My problem that I had with it, I said that the cockpit shaking under high alpha is too high. I think immersion braking, and I'm worried it will put people off and reduce their fun that they have in the Tomcat. As well as that, the very impressive uh, positive pitch pogoing that it has. Okay, very hard for me to quantify what this actually is, but it's the way that the aircraft pulls up when you do aft stick at certain speeds. It doesn't respond very well, so you naturally pull a higher aft stick and it goes into a really aggressive pitch yo-yo, which you get with a lot of the planes, but this one's just particularly bad, really hard to stop it doing this and it's, this is compounded because they've got a very sensitive damage model so you can easily get into this pit pogo pitch almost every driver i see in the f-14 that doesn't drive it regularly and a lot of us just don't have time to drive it regularly go into this pogoing even i saw it shifty do a couple of uh, one of our most experienced guys shifty did it in a mission uh, a few mission days ago a few campaign days ago so it shows that anyone can do it um and the wings fall off simple as that and i'm worried that this ease of this happening will get people to be fed up with their f-14 and feel that they've you know we don't want people pissed off with the modules at the, at the end of the day i certainly don't and my argument of course made a very clear argument in this um uh, um in this video i did the the buyer's guide saying that yes i have no doubt at all that that is realistic what they put in there that that is the amount of cockpit shake that is the amount of pitch pogo the kind of guys who are in hebler um you you can trust them um, to have uh, researched it so it, it is translated into the DCS module to be perfectly accurate but my argument is there, li there is a limit where realism needs to be mixed with playability to be tuned as not to piss off uh, potential people who are going to go and buy the module and get into the game and uh, another kind of uh, argument I said is that the real this pitch uh, moment that the aircraft has, yes, I'm sure it is real and the real aircraft did it, and I'm sure there's all sorts of reasons why, uh, lack of fly-by-wire and so on. But remember that um, if this aircraft is cantilevering, it's pitching across the center of lift, then with the pilot so far out in front, uh, when that starts to pitch, he's going to feel that in his ass in the real aircraft really easily. And he's going to feel the onset of this pogo and he's going to be able to stop it. In DCS, we can't. We have not a single instrument that can tell us this is happening or uh, effect in the plane at the moment as it stands, September 2019, that tells you that a pitch pogo is coming on. The only way you can stop doing it is learn how to not get into that position in the first place, which is fine as long as you just fly the F-14B all the time. But if you fly the different aircraft all the time, that is very hard to avoid. And because we don't have those real feels, those arse feels that the real pilot does, we can't avoid the pitch pogo very well, especially in exciting moments like dogfights, you know, the places where you want to be having fun in your F-14B, not going into an annoying pitch pogo at the end of your three-hour ferry um, to just find that you've pulled back on the stick too hard by two millimetres and your wings have fallen off. And you know what, I'm going to go and play War Thunder and so on. Uh, not me, but you know what I'm trying to say here. 
So that's my explanation of why I think the pitch pogo needs uh, tuning down. And the Copic Shake, I think it's just a bit too much. I think it just puts people off and it just needs tuning down just a bit as well. Either in the mainstream model or a setting adding to allow us to tune this down to just, you know, I'm not saying we don't want realistic models. We do, obviously. I wouldn't be here unless I was convinced these planes were completely realistic. But I just think the absolute top edge of that needs balancing a little bit with playability because at the end of the day, this is a game. We are not teaching real pilots to fly the F-14B. Anyway, um, so I, went, I rattled on a bit there. I should have probably planned better what I was trying to say. But I hope I've given you the gist of what I'm trying to say there and why I'm trying to say it. What I would love to see now is um, these guys, Heatbler. And Heatbler are incredibly hard to get hold of. I've tried to speak to Cobra numerous times on the forum, and he's just plain ignored me every time. It's very frustrating. Uh, very hard people to get hold of, these guys are. I would love someone to come and just, just talk to me. Just take 10, 15 minutes out of your day. Come and talk to me. And um, I'd love to just uh, work through this. Uh, maybe we'll agree, like with the Christian Eagle, I'm just wrong at the end of the day. I'm always happy to be wrong. I usually am. Or maybe I've got something here. Maybe things need to be toned down or an option, a newbie option added in. You know, there's nothing wrong at all with being a noob. We're trying to get noobs into DCS. We need to work together to do that. Not everyone can be an excellent pilot. Um, so that's it, really. That's all my point. Just communication seems to solve problems. Uh, I would love to, to, to get to deal with these two problems a bit more. Uh, there are a few other problems and maybe I'll do another one like this uh, if we feel this helps let me know tell, uh, tell me to go F myself if you want if you think I'm just an idiot and just a moaning old bitch then that's fine as well or any other problems you want me to maybe this is good maybe you know we need to keep these guys accountable for what they're doing some problems a lot of problems that I've complained about are simply not the module goers fault there is always difficulties between module makers and equal dynamics is just the nature of the beast of how ed is set up and i'm not going to moan about it it's just you know it's life we have to deal with it but a lot of things like this like this this is this is module maker stuff and this is something we can deal with if we want to deal with it okay um i hope you enjoyed that no idea why you would but i felt i had to make this um because if we can do some good then we can try and do some good um see you later